I'd like to thank the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine, Bob Preddy, and people that, that have focused on partnering because that's how we move things forward. And it's my pleasure to be able to talk about BioStage right now and where, where we're at. Um, just a quick note, and it's a, a little bit of emotional piece for me. Yesterday was Henry Tremere's funeral in Boston, and I missed that uh, uh, with that. For those of you who don't know, Henry Tremere was a 25, almost 30-year CEO of Genzyme. I'm a Genzyme alum, like a lot of us in Boston. You come from Genzyme, Biogen, Millennium, one of those three companies. It's pretty much most of Boston. But Henry was a pioneer in this field. Henry was a pioneer in regenerative medicine. I managed the biosurgery in terms of chrondocytes and... Uh, uh, Epicell, and so it's really important that regenerative medicine continues on that. When I, Henry told me when I left Genzyme, focus on regenerative medicine, it's the next frontier. And some could say that the field is over-promised and under-delivered in a certain way, but the field has the total opportunity to change a lot of disease states and a lot of things around the world. So just wanted to comment on that. Thanks for indulging me. Uh, publicly traded company. It's a spin out of Harvard Bioscience, a company dedicated to life saving uh, tools. And so, bi bioengineered organ implants. It builds on a paper that Dr. Um, Vacanti and Bob Langer wrote almost 30 years ago Cells on a Scaffold How to Be Able to Move This Forward. We have proof of concept data. We're a preclinical company pivoting to a, a uh, clinical company in 2017 where we're filing an IND. I'll go over that a little bit more. We have an experienced leadership team. Our president and chief medical officer, Severio La Francesca, uh, scientist, surgeon, um, trained under the great Denton Cooley at Texas Heart. He's done 2,000 hearts and 200 lung transplants. And so we're very positioned for a key year. A lot of things, what problem are we trying to solve? We're trying to solve a simple, a complex, and almost a um, challenging problem. The surgical application following esophageal cancer. If the tumor has to get resected, currently right now, two things happen. For about a 12-hour procedure, the surgeons go in, they restaple the stomach, they pull it up through the diaphragm, and they attach that into the chest. Or they go into the peritoneum and take out the colon and then staple that at an at a anastomosis into the chest. The five-year survival of those patients is 15%. That is the current standard of care in the United States and around the world for the surgical application of esophageal cancer. Another challenge, one out of every 2,500 children are born with esophageal atresia, a gap between their upper and lower esophagus. And right now, it's a real challenge of how to be able to bring those two ends together. These are the areas in which BioStage is focused that congenital disorder, what do we do? How does our technology work? So many bright and, and technical people, it's, it's just a little bit of a simple way. Adipose tissue, a biopsy. We isolate and expand mesenchymal stem, stem cells, not man manipulated. We seed those cells onto a scaffold, a highly engineered scaffold that the cells seed on down to the fiber diameter, porosity, just right at how it's seated. The company has 50 to 75 years of knowledge of a bioreactor. How does it go? How does the cell seed on? What does that work with? And then after the removal of the tumor, it's like an end-to-end -end anastomosis, a doctor putting in a vascular graft. It's put in and the body knows what to do next. Where do the cells go? How does it work? Is it a paracrine effect? You got it, that's what happens. And so that's our technology. The scaffold is a form of electro, is electro spinning, a form of 3D printing, and it's down to that area. Looks like an extracellular matrix. And then once it's seated, it, it almost, 
the, it's biocompatible. It, the body accepts it. There's zero rejection in 40 large animals, 40 Yucatan mini pigs. I'm not talking about rats, 40 large animals done. We see the same regeneration. The outer level forms first, and then, and then, in a three-week period, the scaffold's removed. Go down in, eliminate the scaffold. The only regeneration is a biologic response. There's nothing left of the, the synthetic device. So you see the actual pictures here of the, the uh, esophagectomy and then the placement of, of 30 million mesenchymal stem cells delivered right to the area where the body knows what to do. I'm sorry, I'm sitting here looking at my bad skin cancer uh, pieces on my hand. But with that, the body knows what to do. It body knows how to heal itself. I'm not asking it what to do, it's deciding. We were surprised that the body moved the scaffold out of the way and forms that outer layer, but that is what goes on. We have animals alive right now over a year. Over a year where we remove the scaffold and those, those animals are alive. Our company is pivoting again, as I mentioned, from a preclinical company to a clinical company, and we are looking, we, we're looking to file our IND into Q3. We have now then also done cell fate studies of targeting the, the, the DNA on all of those cells to see what happens at the regeneration. And to your knowledge, what happens is what you believe is happening. The body is signaling in a paracrine effect of other cells to be able to come into the area. And in three weeks, that outer layer or stromal cells, vascular tissue forms into that outer layer. At 21 days, you see what, you know, in a looks like vascular tissue. It is a total biologic response. And now, after a year, but you can see it here, post a year, the total epithelium forms within 90 days. And how does that epithelium know to grow there? We see it grow end to end, proximally to distally, right to the middle. And so again, uh, my, my could, apology to my chief medical officer, but to Dr. <laughs> Severio La Francesca, I say, it's bioplumbing. It knows what to do. It replaces the area that's missing, and that's what we're seeing. Much more of an elegant response than pu putting your colon into the chest or stapling your stomach or pulling that up with a 15% survival at five years. And so look, there are many, many elegant ways that have been presented here from CRISPR technology to other things to other area. I'm one of the few people that managed a commercial autologous business at Genzyme. And so it's tough, it's hard, it's heavy lifting in moving it forward. And you see things on the market of skin and chrondocytes and small vessels. And there will be a promise of lung and liver and kidney and all of these other areas. But we believe at BioStage that hollow organs is the next frontier as this moves forward, particularly into those surgical areas. We're also focused on to the trachea and focused also on to the bronchus. And so when you have central lung cancer, 140,000 cases of that in the US, and 40,000 of them in central lung where you just have to remove the tumor. No, no issue in the lung at all, but then you have to, the surgeons discard the lung because they have no way of reattaching it. Our technology, you can reattach that. We've seen that in the proof of concept into large animals, and this is the area what we're moving forward into. Congenital disorder, as I mentioned, pediatric esophageal atresia. We're partnered with Connecticut Children's and their surgeon in chief, Dr. Christine Fink. She showed recent data at the pediatric surgical meeting, APSA, you, in, in, the, in the small piglets, now of putting in, putting in the scaffold in cells, seeing the regeneration, and you see the weight growth into that. This is a big area where we're also focused onto the pediatric area. 
What's our IP? Our IP is not mesenchymal stem cells, but the cells on the scaffold. How does that interact? Cells on a scaffold, how do they stay? How is it delivered? A lot of the stem cell work, where do the cells go? How do they get there? Essentially, the scaffold is the drug delivery device, if you will. And so that's what we see in our technology, and that's what we are focused on into this area. Two, uh, two gentlemen, two prominent uh, folks into the regenerative medicine area, Dr. Jay Vacanti at Mass General, co-chairman of our scientific advisory board, Dr. Steve Badalak at the McGowan Institute at Pittsburgh. And so those two gentlemen would not be on our board if they did not see the science and the advancement that we're doing into this space. Um, just commented again on Severio, very prominent uh, into this space. He's also focusing on D-cell, recell lung work and other areas. Uh, Laura Mondano is at Genzyme Histogenics as a regulatory person who can move this field forward. A lot of great ideas, but you need to be able to have that regulatory pathway. And again, I thank the, the, the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine for the community of people that it takes to be able to move, move things forward. So again, we have posit positive confirmatory preclinical data. We're advancing onto that data right now into that the area. Uh, we have had our pre-IND meeting with the FDA. We're advancing this forward. It is, a, it is a, a biologic, a combination product biologic. And so that's how it's moving it forward. We look to be able to show proof of concept into man going into a phase one within our IND. We're very excited into that. We're excited about the kids and moving it into the, pre, um, uh, the uh, pediatric atresia area. So we're continuing to build on that work into Q2 right now. We're looking to file our IND into Q3. And so look, running a publicly traded company into a regenerative medicine space in a preclinical phase, really easy job to do. No, no, no issue at all. Raising money, moving it forward, biology works exactly the way you want to see it. You got my point of view. And so the point being is that the biology is real. This is happening, we're seeing it, we're working this thing through. We're trying to create our runway to bring the data to move this company forward. This is a real way to change the lives of patients that have to go through a stomach pull up, a colon interposition, or these kids with a congenital disorder. That is where we're focused. Where's the money gonna come from? We'll figure that out. We've raised $38 million to date. We are moving this piece forward. We will continue to move it forward in the same vein that all of you move your companies and your interests forward because it's the right thing for the patients, you care about doing it, and it'll change and advance the field going forward. And so that's, that's what we're looking to do. And so like into this alliance, we're, we're, we're happy for that. We're also partnered with the Mayo Clinic. As you know, Mayo Clinic is just not partnering with anybody along the way. We're partnered with the chief of uh, thoracic surgery there, Dr. Dennis Weigel, PhD, uh, MD, focused into this area. We're doing a lot of uh, the animal work and other work with Mayo Clinic. Also Connecticut Children's, Dr. Christine Fink. And, and we're doing a number of other things along the way to be able to partner. If you have interest into this field, um, if you think that something that you have or guidance for us, happy to hear that and we would like to move this forward. So I thank you for the uh, opportunity to uh, present BioStage. Um, welcome the continued dialogue into this field. I applaud all of you for what you do and we're continuing to move our piece forward at BioStage. Thank you very much.